Hello, and welcome to Esther's Gardening Adventures. I'm Esther, and I'm excited to take you out on my week two, not four fingers, two tour of my garden. We're still well into the spring. I'm in zone 7A in Maryland, and there is some new stuff to show you. If you've been watching my recent videos, you might know about a couple of them, but there's more that I haven't talked about yet. Real quick, I should mention that almost all, with exception to the pansies, <laughs> everything you're gonna see in the garden is something that I grew from seed using the winter sowing process. And that is basically, if you wanna know more about it, check out my winter sowing 101 series. But basically it's a process of using things like milk jugs, soda bottles, juice bottles, things like that, to grow your seedlings outdoors um, for your spring and summer garden. And you do that instead of growing seedlings indoors under grow lights. Before we go outside, there's something inside I want to show you. Last year, at the end of the season, I decided to attempt to overwinter a few of my pepper plants that I had grown last year. Pepper plants, it turns out, are actually perennials. They can, um, they can overwinter in your house if it's if you're in an area that gets too cold for them to survive outside and i brought three plants in i trimmed them back um, with almost no leaves and this is what i have now well first of all two of them died pretty early on but look guys this is my jalapeno pepper plant and she's doing beautiful. About two weeks ago, she started putting out new fresh leaves. So the original leaves that stayed on the plant the entire winter were these two. Uh, and this, and this one. You can kind of tell because they look older. They look kind of mucked up. This one's a lot more moth-eaten than it looked before. Look how beautiful that leaf is. Oh, it's a gorgeous leaf. All right, now for real, let's go outside. The first thing I want to show you is if you watched my video yesterday, I made <laughs> from scratch a little gate to my garden entrance. Um, it's really not meant to keep anything in or out. It's meant as a, as a deterrent for deer not to just traipse in, into my garden. I mean, there's this huge gap here that I have this thing, you know. So it's not exactly like <laughs> this garden is, uh, is animal proof, but it helps enclose the garden a little more. So that makes me happy. All right, let's go inside. The first thing you might notice is my kohlrabi is gone. Um, I got a really close inspection to it and um, I pulled back the leaves and the stem had been hollowed out. So I pulled the plant, I put it in the compost and, you know, I, I knew I probably wouldn't be able to give it full time to get as mature as it needs because this is going to be where I put several tomato plants. The um, radishes that I transplanted are doing pretty good. You know, one thing I realized is by transplanting them, I might not have transplanted them deep enough originally. So, lesson learned for next time, but some of them are still producing fruit. So, that's a positive. The radishes are coming along very nicely, as are the beets. Let's get in here and see a few. You remember how I talked about how they'll grow away from each other? Here's the perfect example of how radishes grow when you plant them together. And what I've been doing is, I've been going in and harvesting the biggest one and letting the smaller ones grow. There are some bald spots because I've already harvested some. But you can see this one's ready to pull. Now I'm going to do a separate video on harvesting some of the radishes and making some dishes with it. But wanted you to see that example of them splitting out. I transplanted out the cabbage. Um, this is Ch Charmaine cabbage, I think is what it's called. And apparently these cabbages can get crowded. They don't mind being a little bit crowded. They're supposed to have 11 to 13 inches between them. That one definitely has enough space, those don't. And as you can see, I've put up the bridle tool to keep the butterfly, the cabbage worm out. 
And I am realizing that yes, slugs are getting to them. It's not the cabbage moth or cabbage butterfly because I have definitely kept these covered the whole time. And one day after being in here, they started getting holes in them. So it's definitely slugs. It's okay, as long as the plants stay healthy. I transplanted them three days ago and look, they're standing up on their own already. So they're doing really well. And one of the things I'm doing to keep them in place is I got these clamps. I'll provide a link to them. I got these clamps online through Amazon and it helps hold them down. It does a really good job connecting to the bamboo to hold things in place. So, and even at the top, you can see there. So yeah, that's one of my little tricks plus stones, little stones around the bottom. And then I planted mammoth dill. It's looking really good. I did that last week, I think right after I did the video. It's starting to spread out. And over here, that gets part shade, or it gets mostly sun, but we're, it's 10 o'clock in the morning, is cilantro, a little bed of cilantro. Cilantro will not last into the heat of the summer, and so I'm not worried about wasting this space that I might use for other vegetables. Um, it will get its use. So one afternoon, I was sitting in my chair, like I am right now, and I realized there was this huge patch between the two beds that I could put something there. So, here it is, guys. Here it is. I am going to have, now these are probably going to be a little more spread out once I start putting stuff in them, but I'm going to have, in between the two beds, I'm going to have a row, two rows of containers. And during the day I've kept these upside down so they don't fill with water and then end up promoting mosquitoes. But for the, for the video for this, I've turned them right side up. Um, so this is where I'm going to have several layers. You may see a bucket over there. Last year I grew a tomato in that very spot in a bucket like that and it did really well. So I'm probably going to have that over there. I can navigate around, plenty of space to navigate between the two. And then I'm going to have a few buckets, um, containers. The, the, white, the white ones I got at Home Depot for, I think, four something each, about $5 each. They're biodegradable five-gallon buckets. Uh, not biodegradable, food safe uh, five-gallon buckets. And then I have, I need to clean it out, but I have this little thing here that I will probably grow some herbs in. So, yeah, I think the garden design is starting to actually shape up to look very gardenish. <laughs> which makes me very happy. And a quick update over here. A few days ago, I transplanted out um, a whole container of alyssum, and I'll have a link to that in this video. Uh, I'm gonna have them growing around the edges of this um, bed under my Japanese maple tree. And they seem, I mean, it's been three days, I think, since I planted them. It's doing so well. Now I didn't transplant just one per spot. I did quite a bit, come on, there we go. I did quite a bit of um, transplanting them in groups. And then I also transplanted some alone, some by themselves, and we will see, like this one is all, stop freaking out about the color camera. There we go. This one is all by itself, all by my, no, nope, don't do it, Esther. All right, <laughs> anyway. So that is turning out really well so far. I mean, it's been three days, but I'm happy. I will tell you off camera, I found a few alyssum seedlings that I did not fit in the bed. And so I stuffed them over here in a corner of this bed and we'll see what they do. It might look like they migrated on their own, but they didn't. The sunflowers, the autumn beauty sunflowers are doing really well. They're looking really healthy. Now to the backyard. Well, my mammoth sunflowers, are, I think they've grown quite a bit. This one over here was struggling this morning. I gave it some extra, that one right there. I gave it some extra water and now it's sitting upright again, so that's good. This right here is the set of all the winter sowing jugs that have not sprouted yet. Um, I recently planted sweet orange bell peppers for my mom, lemon basil, um, if you recall from my seed swap, my sugar rush, peach, peppers, um, what else hasn't sprouted? Jimmy Nardello peppers from Baker Creek. 
Nope, still nothing. Um, my 16-year-old beefsteak tomatoes, no sign of life yet. Ah, I think that might not succeed. My caserta, oh, guys! My caserta kazucchini has sprouted. This is new, two days new. That's exciting, guys. I'm really, really thrilled. Yay, you get to be here for a discovery with me. Okay, you go in the yes, I've sprouted bucket section. <laughs> Um, who else do we have? Elderberry hasn't sprouted yet. Marigolds from Fairy Morris. My marigolds that I saved seeds from last year have done great. White Avens. This is one I got from someone, and I think the seeds just were never good. Because I tried them last year and they didn't sprout either. My basil. Hostas that I got from Cheryl haven't sprouted yet, but I've only had them in there for two weeks. So they could still sprout. As well as some Moringa seeds. And my Mexican sunflowers, which is not a surprise because last year they were volunteers in my yard and I didn't really actually see them until late, late summer. This is my brandy wine. It's my brandy wine and hillbilly flame tomatoes. My camera, they're so close my camera doesn't want to focus on them. They're looking pretty good. They're getting pretty high up. I'm not ready to transplant them yet. Let's see, this is my marigolds that are from my, oh, this is the marigold, big marigold seeds. They're looking, oh, they're looking gorgeous. I'm not gonna be transplanting anything until after the last frost risk, which is around Mother's Day, May 9. So we have two to three weeks left before I will be comfortable transplanting. And in fact, we are going to be getting very close to a frost midweek this week. So we will see, um, I'm not gonna cover the jugs unless the temperature keeps dropping in the forecast. Um, but I do have some uh, frost hardy plants, or not frost hardy, frost sensitive plants as well that I've transplanted like the alyssum. So I'm hoping we don't get a hard freeze. I have weed whacked the lawn. <laughs> this is what it looks like when you would weed whack it and don't use a mower and also when you wait way too late, I did it this morning to weed whack so that you have just piles of it. The kale inside of the cover is doing really well. This is the Russian kale. That's the lacinato. That lacinato plant right there is huge. My mixed lettuce bulk planted. This was the hunk of seed experiment. Hunk of seed experiment part two. They're doing really well. And you know what's interesting in the front yard? The red leaves are the same jugs, okay? The red leaves are taking over here. It's a pretty even. I think it's pretty even between them both. And look how gorgeous, 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 gorgeous. My romaine lettuce, my Paris Island romaine lettuce is doing. In fact, I could probably start harvesting leaves from the outside of that one. I think I will. I think that's gonna be my lunch today. Is that plus some of those leaves plus some radishes from the front yard. Ooh yeah. The raspberry plants are doing good. We have lots more flowers growing. You can see some down there. The sugar snap peas need a little bit of help connecting. Some of them need help connecting to the trellis. So I'm gonna make that happen today. Spinach is doing really well, as are the mustards. And then my black seeded Simpson lettuce over here is actually starting to emerge and, and become decent size enough to really look like what it's supposed to. So. That is exciting, guys. And last but not least is, and I'm gonna say the right word this time, rhododendron. And look, guys, we have a bumblebee. You know how much I love bees. We have a bumblebee. They love, they love, love, love this bush. It's just so pretty. Isn't that gorgeous? I wish it weren't in the shade because, I mean, it does well in the shade, but I can just imagine how glorious this would be in broad light. That's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please hit the like button. If you aren't already a subscriber, please consider doing so. And otherwise, I'll see you next time. Happy gardening, everyone.